Alright, let's see if we can try to get finished with the last part of this test review um, for this uh, review exam. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to this one. It says we're here, find the remaining zeros of this polynomial, identify the remaining zeros for the polynomials. And one of the things that we were guaranteed through the um, conjugate pair theorem is that anytime you have a positive i, that you have also a negative, like an opposite conjugate of it. So notice that the real part so like this is really means you always have a real part of an imaginary and I mean this is the real and this is the imaginary. It's the uh, real that stays the same, the imaginary that has the opposite conjugate. So here's another zero and here's the other solution. So that's nice and easy. So this factor the polynomial part completely. Uh, one of the things you're going to do in this case if you're going to factor it, um, see the fourth and you see the negative 64. We have the power to factor this kind of like we would if it was a perfect squared. Uh, well, not in a perfect squared, but more in the sense if it was um, something like if it was just a regular polynomial. For example, um, let's go ahead and take negative 64 and find its uh, two factors actually make up uh, negative 12. It would be, uh, I would say that's probably going to be a division uh, like negative 16, possibly positive 4. Probably the best way to do this is uh, to go y equals, type in negative 64. And if you divide it by x, you have the benefit of when you pull up the table to see everything, all the factors. So let's see which of these, yeah, that's it, 4 and negative 16. So negative 16 and 4, so that means that this is really x squared minus 16, x plus 4, x squared plus 4. And that will give back this polynomial. Now, if you're going to go ahead and find the solutions, you take x squared minus 16, and you make it equal to 0, and you solve. So one of the things I'll be able to guarantee you, when you take x squared, you have 16, you take the square root, you have plus or minus 4. But then when you do uh, <coughs> x squared plus 4, make that equal to 0. We're going to subtract 4, subtract 4. We'll have x squared equal to negative 4 take the square root, you'll have positive or minus 2i. <clears throat> now let's go over here and find the inverse function. Question 21, one of the things we're going to do in order to solve this is to actually um, make the first steps to change this to f of x to y. Afterwards, change the position of x and y. And then you solve for y. So subtract 1, subtract 1. You go get the benefit of seeing x minus 1 is equal to 3y. Divide by 3, divide by 3. y is equal to x minus 1 divided by 3. And there's a solution for that one. Okay, let's move forward. Given x squared minus 4 and x plus 2, we'll find the composition. These are known as composition functions. And what was uh, new about this is this. That this really meant that if you had the fog of x, it just really meant that you were doing f of g of x which means that, uh, like in this case, we would do f of g of x here. So this is so right in here because it's following this format. Look, g of x squared minus 4, which means that you're going to get uh, x plus 2 squared minus 4. And then once you simplify this, this is going to give you um, x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 4. We discovered that cancels. So your final solution is this x squared plus 4x. You can factor out an x if you want, if you want to make it look cleaner. But I think this problem is not necessarily required. Now, the other way around, when you do g, or better put one step right before it, the g of f of x, one of the benefits we'll have here is that this really becomes, when you're looking at the g function, so here, and what you're doing is, is that f of x only goes in that spot, really doing this, f of x plus 2, which means you'll have x squared minus 4 plus 2, which comes out being x squared minus 2. So here's the other solution, here's the other solution. Uh, now, this one says find the vertical asymptotes and roots. Uh, what we'll have on this one 
Uh, to find vertical asymptotes, they're located to here. We look at the denominator. So you take x minus 5, set it equal to 0. Because that's exactly um, one of the connections is that vertical asymptotes are also domain errors. Or where the domain doesn't exist. So I'll be able to guarantee you vertical asymptote x equal to 5. Now as far as finding the roots, you take the numerator. So roots will be for this numerator. So we're going to do x squared minus x plus 6. Set that equal to 0. It would be beneficial to factor this. And imagine since it's negative 1, it's going to be, um, let's see, negative 3. Uh, you know what? Let's see. Because if you try to do negative 3 positive 2, that's not going to work. Mm, you know, this one actually might be imaginary. Let's find out. Yeah, because uh, you need that to be negative. It was negative 3, negative 2, and that may not work. The way you could really tell is actually, let's go ahead and graph this. I'll have to graph this and just kind of find out what the solution of this one is. So we have, uh, let's see, x squared. <laughs> let's see, right here, x squared uh, minus x plus x. Yeah. All the solutions are imaginary, so this one actually has no roots. So we go back to this one, no roots. There was nothing that you could do to actually discover one, so there's no roots on this one. All right, let's go ahead and now convert. Oh, we convert 81.96 into the actual um, degree minutes seconds. This is what you do. You take um, 81 degrees. That's for set. That's already solved for. But to get the minute version, we're going to multiply that by 60. And the whole number will be our solution for the seconds. Oh, hold on. Go back here. And let's take away these six. That one. Okay, lovely. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do 0.96 times 60. And our solution comes out being 57.6. And then... Um, so, so far, I could guarantee you that the seconds are going to be 57 seconds. You take the point 6, and you multiply this by 60. So, in this case, let's go ahead and take that point 6, multiply it by 60, 36. So, then this is the, sec the seconds portion, 36 seconds. I love this. It says here, find exact value, do not use a calculator. So one of the things that we're going to have the benefit of doing is that we're going to look for 10 pi over 3. Now the only thing that makes this slightly different from what we're doing is the fact that the unit circle could revolve. So what we're going to be looking for this is that the fact that uh, this is equivalent. If you factor this and into a whole number, this is the same thing as 3 over 1 third pi. Which means that uh, one of the benefits that we have in knowing is that if we go over 2 pi, so 2 pi, we're going to go ahead and describe this as uh, if I subtract, if I take 3 over 1 third pi and subtract 2 pi, I'll actually end up virtually just with 1 third pi. Like if I take away 2 pi from here, the solution of that comes out being you're left with then 1 and 1 third pi which is the same thing actually as uh, 4 thirds pi. The reason why I did that is because uh, we have the benefit of knowing that uh, anytime you go over 2 pi, you start revolving in the unit circle. Let's see what I have the unit circle of. I don't. Let me go ahead and pull that up for us. Okay, so I got a unit circle pulled up, and here it is. Now, the 4 thirds pi is right over here. So that means that when I look at this one, I want the cosine value. That's going to be a negative half. So the solution here will then be negative one half. Okay, now let's go ahead. Same thing with uh, let's do all of these, as I would love just to be able to finish this video, especially for the people that are taking the final exam tomorrow. Uh, for this one right here, we're going to go ahead and then do uh, 21. So if I divide that, it's going to be five one fourth pi. So one of the things we discover is that um, if I subtract, this one's going to mean and I, if I subtract, there's actually two, 
we're going to revolve five times around. So if you want to think about it more in this fashion, because it's uh, the way I want to explain it in words, might make more sense here. Uh, okay, so here we go. Go back. Let me erase this. If it does it for me, it doesn't want to really do that. Okay, so let me explain it here. Okay, so we go pi. Okay, so 2 pi right here. 4 pi. 5 pi. 1 fourth pi. There it is. So this is the angle of 5 and 1 fourth pi. And that's actually what they're asking for. And I think they want sine. So the solution for this one would be sine. Let's see. Sine is negative square root of 2 over 2. So that means the solution here is negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, tangent value, 750 degrees. This means that in this case, we're going to go um, a degrees forms twice around because remember, we're going to be able to go 720, 360 plus 360, 720. So one of the things on this one that I'll be able to guarantee you, let's see if the eraser works on this. I'd love to get, kind of get some things taken off here. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to do so. No, it's not. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, change colors and put it somewhere different. Okay, so we got going around 360, 720, and then from 720 going 30 degrees more. So right here, the tangent value, which is this value here, will be the square root of 3 over 3. So the solution here will be square root of 3 over 3. Let's see how many questions I have left. Uh, not that many, what it seems like. Let's see if there's another chart on here. No, that's it. Let me go ahead and let some classmates in, and then I'll finish it here. We are back. Now, let me go ahead and finish this off, because we don't have that many questions to work with. But I also, let's go move on to question 26. Now, here they want us to find the point for negative 3, 4. Now, one thing you're assuming is that you're starting actually at the origin. Uh, negative 3, 4, then we'll make it uh, that this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then 4 would be 2, 3, 4. So we have this point, and what they're asking for is they want you to find the cosine of this angle value. Anytime you work with this, this is what it thinks it defaults to. Now we have the benefit of knowing that this is negative 3, and that this side is 4. So when I want to find the cosine value for this, cosine value will be adjacent over hypotenuse. Now this is a uh, 3, 4, 5 triangle, which means that this is 5. You also can do uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And then you're able to prove that negative 3 squared plus uh, 4 squared is going to be equal to, in this case, so it's going to equal to 5 squared. So that's the reason why, or c squared, before we get there. We'll get 25 is equal to c squared. When we take the square root, we find out that c is equal to 5. So once you discover that it's 5, then the cosine will just be this value divided by that value. So just remember, you write down Sakatoa as a good, helpful solution to a guide. So then cosine of the angle is then is guaranteed to be negative 3 over 5. All right, now for this one right here, um, this one's going to be slightly different, but this is still x and y. And one thing is, one thing is important to know about this, especially with tangent, is that this one's going to have some kind of triangle, but this is going to it's going to fall two ninths, and the y value will be square root of 77 over nine. And so you'll have this triangle. So then this is the adjacent. This is the opposite side. So we have the power then just to write down that the angle then, well, remember, and it's also important to know that tangent is y over x. So I could write you the solution 77 over 9 over 2 over 9. So when I solve this, it's going to be this 77 over 9. And then you got to take the reciprocal when you're simplifying the solution. So it'll be 9 over 2. Those cancel out, and we have the benefit in seeing that this is the solution here. All right, now let's go ahead and do the next one, how to change this to radians. Oh, this is lovely. Now, it's easy because all you do is take 320, and you're going to multiply by this conversion factor, yes. pi over 180. So one of the benefits that we'll have is that we'll take 320, 
and then we'll math frag that. So we'll put divided by 180. And then afterwards we'll have, if I math frag this, solution will be 16 over 9 pi. So that'll be the solution for that one. Okay, now for the very last one, which is uh, how to solve this triangle. Um, they want us to find the unknown sides. Also, let's just finish that. That's our solution. Okay, this is 2. This is 8. Uh, alpha, beta is the things that we don't know. Now, let me go ahead and um, describe. The first thing we're going to do is use Pythagorean theorem to find this last solution. So one of the things we're going to do is uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And then uh, we'll do 2 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. And one of the benefits we'll have is that this will then be 4 plus 64 is equal to c squared. When we take the square root on both sides, this simplifies the square root of 68 as far as c. So then I can guarantee you that this is the square root of 68. Um, after that, we're going to pick a side to solve for an angle. I'll pick this one, and I'm going to use um, opposite and the adjacent side. So one of the benefits we'll have is that we'll have a uh, tangent of the angle. It's going to be then 8 over 2, which is opposite of our adjacent. And then to get the actual angle value, you find the inverse value of both sides. And we'll have the benefit of... Uh, now, very important, check mode. Make sure it's in degrees, as you see on there. But let me go ahead and share with you. Uh, if I go ahead and I do second tan, uh, 8 divided by 2, I could then guarantee you that the solution comes out being 75.96 degrees. So 75.96. If I subtract that by 90, I could then do 90 minus the solution, and it comes out being this uh, 14. So here's 14 degrees. So that means that in each one, then, then alpha is, uh, how much does it How much should it be? 14 points. I'll, I'll, do, I'll write down, I'll round it to 14.1. So this is 14.1. Beta is 75.9. Uh, and this unknown missing C value, the last one we had to find out was the square root of 6 to 8. All right, I love the time to take a look at the video, and I'm hoping the best of luck to you on the final.